Hi everyone, this is Lady D and I'm just coming to you again with uh, another video and just something on my mind that I wanted to um, talk about and um, this video is uh, to my confessing Christian brothers and sisters and by Christians of course I mean uh, believers in Christ. I know nowadays we have a lot of Christians uh, you know, but we all don't believe in the same thing. So I just wanted to differentiate between um, uh, between all of us and let and let you know exactly who I am referring to. So the believers in Jesus Christ. Um, so it's to my confessing brothers and sisters regarding some of the things that I've noticed concerning some of us within the body of Christ. I understand I won't get too many amens or high ratings on this, but I think it needs to be said, um, or and if you heard it before, I think it needs to be repeated and repeated and repeated until we get it down on the inside of us. Um, but one of the most heartbreaking parts uh, for me about being a believer in Jesus Christ, living a mediocre life, is when it becomes common to us. And common means lacking distinction, ordinary, of mediocre or inferior quality. So when it becomes um, ordinary for us, um, so um, you know, so certain things that we do, when it becomes so ordinary to us that it becomes our way of life. Um, so it, it, you know, it, 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 it's heartbreaking for me to see certain people who believe in Christ and, and their lives are totally opposite of what their belief in Christ is. Um, how do we believe in Jesus and live a common or an ordinary, uh, a mediocre life? You know, um, why, are we, why are we freed but choose to stay bound? And um, this is coming from, you know, the depths of my heart. Um, and I, they tell you when you speak, you're first talking to yourself, and I am talking to myself, so I say amen to self on this one. And um, just noticing people around me, um, different things that I see in Christendom, and um, different people, and just different situations just really has me um, questioning some things. And, you know, I would like to know, since when is it ever common for us to confess Christ and yet have sex outside of marriage. You know, when is it ever common for us to confess and live any kind of way? You know, when is it ever common to act married even if we're not legally married? When is it ever common to stay depressed and robbed of life when we confess Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior? Uh, when is it ever common to stay impoverished in all areas of life? You know, when is it ever common to go nowhere and do nothing while still confessing the name of Jesus Christ? When is it ever common to gain the whole world but not a life pleasing unto God and confess Jesus Christ? When is it, when is it ever common to preach, lead, prophesy, teach, speak in tongues, run around the church, tear the church up, worship, praise, and leave the church still with our life a mess? You know, when is it ever coming for that to happen? Um, why confess with our mouths but our lives stay the same? If I'm going to believe, I want everything that God, Jesus Christ, has to offer me and my life in every area. I don't want to be free to one area and bound in the other area. No, I want the whole total freedom that Jesus Christ has come to give us. And if he can't free me all, then he fails to be Jesus Christ but I'm moving ahead of myself. Um, having God in your life is power, not mediocrity. You know, Acts 1 and 8 says, when, when the Holy Ghost has come be upon you, you shall receive power. And um, that power is to live right, power to have a right mind, a sound mind, power to have your body right, power to have your soul right. You know, um, Christians, believers in Christ, shall ne should never live common lives because our God is not just any old common God, right? But He is the only living God and our lives should reflect this truth. So for example, if I believe in the God I confess, 
I know that I know that I know can no one tells me otherwise that he has more than enough power to enable me to control myself. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, His strength is made perfect in our weakness. So even if I, my excuse is I'm so weak in that area, that's okay. That's what makes him God. He's able to come into that area and strengthen us. You know, so he's able to control. Uh, he's able to, to help me control my sexual urges until I'm legally married. Yes, he's able to do that. Uh, he's able for me to keep my panties on. Yes, he's able to do that. Or your boxers on. Very tight. He's able to do that. Um, I tried him and he works. Okay, especially in that area. I have been a virgin going on almost 28 years now and kept only by the power of God because he's more than, he's more than able to do that. Um, Philippians 4.13 tells us we can do all things through Christ. I believe that. Um, I, I'm not one of those just quoting scriptures to look good and to sound good and sound intelligent. I really do believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, I know his power to pull you out of a deepest of your deepest hole of depression and give you a sound mind. I know that personally because I've been there and I've done that. I know he has power to enable me to surpass and defeat any generational curse. I know in my family, anything. I know because I've done that and I am continuing to do that through Christ's strength. I know he has power for living. I know he has power so that I can accomplish anything. It doesn't matter where I grew up, what family I'm a part of, what city I'm from, who I know, who knows my name. It doesn't matter. Because Christ is in me. He is my hope. And I know I can do all things through him. Now this is not judging or condemnation, but this is Christian education, if I can say it like that. Um, Romans 3.23 tells us we have all fallen short. So there's no judgment here because I, I, I'll, I'll admit to you, I've fallen short plenty of times. And uh, the Bible says a righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets back up. So it's not about the falling. It's do you get back up or do you just stay down? But if God can't pick us up and clean us off and dust us off and set us on a straight path, then he fails to be God. And our God can do anything but fail, right? With God, all things are possible. And that is a fact. It's not my opinion. It's a fact. It's a proven fact. I know that all the times we don't understand everything that happens. And the road in life is hard. I'll agree with that. But aren't you glad that, that life, that our life, lives are in good hands? Um, the one who holds the future, the one who knows tomorrow, the one who knows our past. He holds our, our life in his hands. And I'm glad that my life is in his hands. And he gives us strength from the journey for when we are so weak, when we feel like we can't take it no more. I've been there. And I find that there's something on the inside of me that rises up and says, you can go on a little bit further. And I look back a year or two later and I said, I thought I never could have made it past that point. But look at me now. And that's the Lord's doing. And uh, he gives us strength for the journey. If you need wisdom, he'll, he asks him. The Bible says, ask in James chapter 1. Ask for wisdom. If any man likes wisdom, let him ask. Wisdom is the, not only to know what to do, but how to do it. And, and uh, so if we don't have wisdom in certain areas, we're weak in that area. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom in that area. I would like to encourage those of you who are confessing believers in Christ, who are in sin, out of the will of God for your life, and are very aware of it, and those of you who have been in certain situations and circumstances for so long that your sin has become a part of your everyday life.